two steps require the entire log as, as the input for this forensic investigation process. The problem is that you can imagine that like thousands and millions of log entries are generated every day, right? In fact, uh, based on a, uh, uh, a recent experiment, uh, you know, gigabytes of log entry, gigabytes of log data are generated on a daily basis. This is a very typical kind of a web server kind of a workload. And uh, so basically, imagine you use this gigabyte of log file to perform the forensic investigation, you, will, you are likely to experience a relatively long uh, uh, forensic investigation uh, procedure, right? So the time uh, taken to identify the breaking point, the time taken to uh, uh, identify the contaminations uh, tend to be long. And we want to reduce, you know, the overhead and the latency of such investigation. Because timely uh, investigation is critical. Because once you identify all these things, you can correspondingly come up with the patches or you can correspondingly, you know, perform some of the recovery operations and you can, you know, uh, 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 in a very timely fashion notify you know other users of this uh, specific vulnerability right and so that the, hopefully their system will, will be kind of patched or prevent uh, prevented from uh, from similar attack so basically you'll see that th there, there there is a problem with this long detection period so this is what we call the uh, the intrusion occurrence and detection interval right and this interval is the interval from the uh, from the point your the malware intrudes uh, in, in, you know infects your system to the time instance when you, I, as the user, I, you know, uh, get suspicious of my machine or get suspicious of something uh, going on in my computer. So this can be, you know, this interval can be days, weeks, or even months. And you can imagine during these days, weeks, or months, gigabytes, hundreds and tens and hundreds and, you know, thousands of gigabytes of log, and log data are generated. So basically, that makes your forensic investigation process longer and longer. So, and another problem is that Maybe you have realized that the, you know, all the, the thing that triggers this investigation or, you know, not nothing, but, you know, is, 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 is the identification of a suspicious activity by the user, namely myself, right? So basically you have to wait until uh, a suspicious, uh, until an, an anomaly or, you know, a suspicious uh, item is uh, identified. And then we can trigger the investigation. So this may be kind of uh, you know too late sometimes because maybe the malware has already done most of the harm and also uh, the bad things. Because these are actually uh, so the investigation process is triggered by external detection points. So during during the time you know during that uh, occurrence detection interval, the log file simply sits there passively. The log file itself does not contribute to the triggering of the investigation, right? Because the log file is involved after I identify that detection point. So I want, so it will be very desirable for the log file to provide some of the leads or some of the hints or anomaly warnings to trigger a more timely malware investigation. So this capability is not provided in most of the current uh, log-based approach. So uh, to address you know these uh, problems or to fix these uh, limitations, uh, we, um, we we come up with a uh, a scheme called process coloring. So process coloring uh, can be e can be readily applied and integrated into the existing log based investigation tool. So the investigation tool does not have to be modified. They can still use their reconstruction algorithm, uh, parsing the log entries and construct. The uh, you know the step by step story of the malware intrusion. The the advantage of our approach is that we tend we make the uh, investigation process shorter. And let let me show you how. So the main idea is to do some tainting. So I want to do something you know proactively right before the incident happens. I want to kind of uh, you know assign different colors to different software systems. Like I will assign a color to my web server. I will assign another, a different color to my mail server, and I will assign a third color to my DNS server, you know, so on and so forth, right? Now, all, every one of these software systems is a potential breaking point. We just don't know yet, right, at that time, when we, when we kind of attain uh, these different systems. So what I want to do is that I want those processes created or spawned by these, uh, you know, server processes to inherit the color of the original software. Right? If you do that, you can realize that the color 
the corresponding color of this uh, vulner potentially vulnerable software gets propagated and tainted to all the subsequent processes in objects. So by objects, I mean like, for example, files, share memory created by processes, or sockets opened by these processes, right? So everything will be tainted with the same color. So I want the color to record the traces or the footsteps of, of, of a sequence of operation. So now, uh, with this coloring or this tainting scheme, you can naturally partition your log entries into multiple subsets, and each subset bears a different color. So I will show you now uh, next you know, why such partition is powerful and useful in, in improving the efficiency of malware investigation. So I use the same example, but now I, want, I, 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 integrated, um, I have integrated my process coloring scheme. Right? I want to show you how I can improve the efficiency of malware investigation. So before I start the system, I need to do some extra work. I need to proactively contained or dye my server applications with different colors. So now you see you have the you, you, you have the you, you have the gold, you have the yellow, you have the blue, you have the red, right? So these are the different colors assigned to different uh, software. So now we let's focus on the HTTPD. That's the web server, right? So this let's say imagine that this warn targets the vulnerability of this HTTP daemon, right? And uh, it will uh, first uh, compromise this uh, vulnerable software, and then the, once the malware uh, you know, enters your system, it will create additional processes, and these processes will open file, read file, you know, uh, create new processes, and doing all kinds of things. Now the key difference is the following. Every step it takes, the colors, the, the red color follows the action of the malware. So that's the key difference. If you look at the previous, the traditional way malware investigation is done, such tainting does not exist. Now I have this tainting process, you know, that, you know, that occurs at runtime, following the actions of the malware. So maybe at this time I'm still, I'm still not aware of this, you know, the, the bad things going on uh, in my computer. But at this, at, at some point, if I realize that, for example, a rootkit has been installed. Right? Let's say, you know, again, let me, let, me, let, me, let me show you the same scenario. Now, let's say I, as the user, notice that a rootkit has been installed. What do I do? Or what additional advantage I have? You can immediately check the color of the file. Right? And then you can immediately tell that this is due to the uh, vulnerable HTTP daemon. You can do that even without performing a log-based analysis. Because of my proactive tainting work, Right? Because now the rootkit file bears the red color. And we know that the red color must, be, must have been inherited somehow, transitively, from originally the HTTP daemon. That's one big advantage. The second benefit, now you realize that the log entries are partitioned into multiple subsets. Every subset has its own color. So in order to reconstruct the whole story, in order to reconstruct the whole episode, I no longer have to use the entire log as the input to my uh, in forensic investigation tool. I only use the subset that bears the red color. That's it, right? And you can use the same algorithm. You can use the same reconstruction algorithm as, as, you, uh, you know, as, as the algorithm used in the traditional tool. So that part we don't modify. That's why I'm saying that uh, this technique can be readily integrated with the existing forensic uh, analysis tools. So let me just show you a kind of a, a, a excerpt of the uh, log that we captured in a, in a, in a, in a virtual uh, environment. So this is actually the log entries uh, uh, that, that, that correspond to a slapper worm uh, <coughs> intrusion. So you see log entries of different colors. Every entry records a system call, right? It's that simple. The only thing, that the, good, the beautiful thing is that now they are, they are naturally partitioned by their colors, right? So once you identify this specific you know, this suspicious log entry, namely, you're, you're, well, you're not supposed to have a, you know, suddenly have a, a shell code, you know, uh, a, you know launch in, in your web server. So that's highly, anom you know, that's highly suspicious. So once you have that, you can immediately tell by the color of the corresponding log entry. And you know that this, this shell code must have been introduced or, you know, uh, a, a, a caused by, initially by the, uh, by the HDB. Yeah. Uh, did you add the, uh on the log file, did you add the, the 